Hi, folks. I'm Hector Garcia, a CPA and a small business consultant. And you'll be learning from me this session called Reports and Insights for Business Owners. Okay, let's get started with reporting and insights in QuickBooks for business owners. The agenda for today. First, we're going to talk about what reports are available in each version of QuickBooks. There's different report capabilities across multiple versions of QuickBooks. It's important that you know that up front. Then we're going to talk about basic financial statements, the famous profit and loss and balance sheet. What does that mean to your business? Why is it important that you understand what they are and how to read them? Then we're going to talk about customizing those built-in reports and a little bit of uh, in-depth discussion about cash versus accrual basis. What does that mean? Why does it matter to a small business owner to understand the distinction of the two. Then we're going to discuss open transaction reports, things like the accounts receivable aging reports, accounts payable report, open invoices, unpaid bill reports. These reports represent transactions of, uh, that have not been completed in the, in the accounting cycle, and they're open because they haven't been paid or applied. Then lastly, we're going to discuss tags. Tags is the ultimate way for you to enhance your reporting experience in QuickBooks Online and allows you to customize it to your specific business needs. And lastly, we'll sort of conclude the session by discussing some of the additional resources that you can refer to so you can learn more about reports. Keep in mind that this is part one of this sort of two-part series. Today, we're talking about uh, reports for business owners, basic reports and insights. And tomorrow, we're going to be doing an advanced course on reporting, mostly for accountants. But if you're a small business owner, you're welcome to check it out as well, which will serve as a natural sort of part two, more advanced version of today's class. Okay, let's get started with reports that are available across multiple versions of QuickBooks. First thing you need to know is QuickBooks Online has multiple subscription versions. The simplest version is called Simple Start. And the most advanced version is called Advanced. They have great names from that perspective. The Simple Start gives you all your basic financial reports. As a matter of fact, it gives you over 60 built-in reports. So regardless of what version of QuickBooks you have, everything you need to analyze your financial statements and to prepare your tax returns will be available. However, as you move up in the subscription scale, there's going to be more reports and reporting tools available. Uh, let's discuss my spreadsheet that contains a complete report list. If you click on the link in the slides, it's going to take you to a Google Sheet spreadsheet that, that I built, which contains every report that's available in QuickBooks Online, plus some hidden reports that, um, that cannot be run by just using regular uh, menu workflows. So in this list, you're going to have a list of all the reports. It's going to tell you which version of QuickBooks uh, has that report available the description of that report, and a direct link that if you're logged into QuickBooks Online, it opens up the report immediately from there. So it's a really cool list. Check it out. It's a free resource available to everyone that has that link. The link is in the slides. Okay, let's start with the premise that QuickBooks Online Simple Start and all versions of QuickBooks will contain all the basic financial statements or the basic reports that you need. Now, there's about 20 more reports, actually almost like 30 more reports in uh, QuickBooks on Essentials compared to uh, Simple Start. So in this slide, you're going to see a list of all the reports that you can get when you upgrade from Simple Start to Essentials or any other higher version. Reports like a balance sheet summary, which is a special report. You get the regular balance sheet with Simple Start, but the balance sheet summary is a sort of a special report, reports like a vendor balance summary, um, bills and applied payments, uh, open time activities by employees, uh, all these type of, uh, uh, type of reports that you see in this slide are only available in Essentials Plus and Advanced. Now, once your business starts running, uh, once your business starts growing and it starts running more smoothly, you're going to need more information. You're going to need to do a budget, budget versus actual, so you understand where your business is versus where you planned it to be. Uh, profit and loss by class or location, so you can have multiple 
cost centers or profit centers inside your business and you can run a full financial statement by that class or location. You can have inventory valuation reports because you need plus or advanced to run inventory. You're going to have open purchase order reports or purchase order detail reports because purchase orders are only available in plus or advanced. So that gives you a general idea into you upgrade QuickBooks to a higher version, you get more features, and of course you get the accompanying reports for those features. Now if you find your business growing really fast and you need a lot of information that maybe the basic and the built-in reports in QuickBooks don't give you, you're going to consider upgrading to the advanced version of QuickBooks Online, which contains three essential reporting tools that the other ones don't. Fathom HQ is a third-party reporting app, best in class, allows you to create custom dashboards, KPIs, key performance indicators, KPI short for that, forecasting and consolidation if you have multiple businesses in QuickBooks Online with different companies or different entities and you want to consolidate them into one so you can analyze everything together. You're going to be able to do that with Fathom HQ and that's included with your advanced description. You're also going to have custom fields. These are fields that allow you to enter whatever data you want, including a drop-down menu, including custom dates, including open fields where you can type text or numbers. And by creating custom fields, you create sort of a custom workflow experience where the user is entering specific data that QuickBooks wasn't built in to track from the beginning. And you'll be able to run reports that are filterable or groupable by that custom field. And finally, the custom report builder, which in my opinion is the most advanced reporting tool in the entire competitive scape of cloud-based accounting softwares at the QuickBooks Online price range, which allows you to give you pivot table style transaction detail reports. So if you're an Excel geek like me, you know what a pivot table is. If you don't know what pivot table is, it's fine. You do kind of have to experience it. Basically, it's a whole bunch of data that's grouped into sort of logical categories. So when you're able to look at a report in that way, you can get you can gain a lot of insight really, really quickly with a custom report builder. So definitely check that out if you uh, or when you upgrade to QuickBooks Online Advance. Let's talk about basic financial statements, the profit and loss, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flow. At any point in time that you have an investor or a loan, or you're dealing with a with a bank, or you're dealing with someone that's going to give money to your business or extend credit to your business, they're going to want to see these financial statements. On top of the fact that a third party might look at these financial statements, you as a small business owner might also want to have access to these and understand them. So the profit and loss on the balance sheet are the most typical ones that are looked at. And generally, my recommendation is that you always look at them together, profit and loss and balance sheet hand in hand. One by itself doesn't tell you the entire story. You need both reports, profit and loss and balance sheet. What is the profit and loss? Simple. It shows you the sales and the expenses during a period of time. That net result of the sales and the expenses is called net income or the profitability of your business, which is how effectively were you able to receive money from your customers, spend money to run the business, and the net is the profit or the result. And that's a really important number because that net income becomes the number that ties into your balance sheet. We'll discuss that in a minute. The balance sheet will show you your assets. This is what you own or other people owe you. Your liabilities. This is what other people have on you, basically, that you have to pay them. This is what you owe to others. So others can make claims on your assets with liabilities. Typical one is, would be like a bank loan. And then we're going to arrive to equity or the net assets. The difference between assets and liabilities is your equity or your net assets. In some cases, this equity or net assets are also called the net worth of the business or the accounting net worth. Now, if you were to sell your business, I'm sure the buyer will buy not just the net assets, but the goodwill and what they or what they feel to be the value of your brand or the potential per se. So that's going to be outside of the accounting equation. But from an accounting perspective, the value of the business is this assets minus li liability equation. Now, 
how does a business increase in value over time? And typically when we are a small business owner and we're analyzing our financial reports, this is what we are looking at. We're seeing, you know, are, is my business increasing in value? So net income, which is the profit of your business that gets retained, that doesn't get distributed to the owners, is the, the, the factor that essentially increases this accounting net worth of the business. The other way you can increase the value of the business is where, with the owners putting money in or contributing money in or investing in the business. This is called the capital. So any point in time the business makes money and does not distribute that to the owners and the owners put capital in the business and do not get paid back on it, that's increasing the value of the business. Yes, we understand business owners need to enjoy the fruits of their labor and they need to get back for their investment, not just in capital and money, but their effort. So it's, it makes total sense for owners to take distributions out. That's fine. That's legal. There are tax consequences, potentially, depending on your legal entity and the, the structure of your capital. However, just keep in mind that the capital that stays in the business and the profits that get retained is essentially what pushes that equity number or the net asset number or the net worth to stay up and makes your business more valuable. Now, the other big question we get um, as, an, as accountants for small business owners is, why is my net income not matching the cash on hand, the money in the bank? So is net income the same as cash on hand? The answer is no. There might be some rare cases in which it is, but the answer is no. Because cash or money on the bank or cash on hand, whatever you want to call it, can be affected by activities that do not affect your profitability or your net income. For example, if you purchase an asset, if you borrow money from the bank, if you pay off a debt, if you take in capital from the owner, if you pay the owner back or give the owner a distribution, all those activities I mentioned are what's called balance sheet transactions. They don't affect your profit and loss. They don't affect your net income. Therefore, your net income will probably not match your cash. Right? So net income will probably not match your cash. Which leads us to the statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flows is what reconciles your net income and your cash on hand. So the statement of cash flows will start with your net income. This is the, what your profit and loss says the difference between sales and expenses is. And uh, all the activities that increase your cash or decrease your cash, such as extending customer's credit, right? That's going to decrease your cash. Right? It's going to increase your profits, decrease your cash. Or when your vendors extend you credit, which is going to increase your cash because you don't have to pay them. So you take, take on the expense, you reduce your, your, um, you, you, take, on, you take on the expense, you uh, essentially re reduce that net income, reduce that profitability, but it doesn't affect your cash. And then other things like, as we mentioned earlier, investing in fixed assets, uh, paying off debt, taking on debt, that sort of thing. So you start with net income, all the activities that affect your cash, and then at the end, the cash in hand. Everything you see in the statement of cash flows are balance sheet items, everything, with the exception of the net income all the way in the top. So this is when I mentioned earlier that the net income and the balance sheet, they tie us as this net income number. And the statement of cash flow is what reconciles it. Here's a pro tip regarding statement of cash flows. If you run a balance sheet report with a previous period change comparison, and you get to see the difference between what it was, let's say, last month or last year versus what it is now, that balance sheet uh, value change in your assets and your liabilities and your equity will actually explain the changes between net income and cash. So you can essentially get the exact same information that you get from the statement of cash flows by looking at a comparative period of your balance sheet with the dollar change next to it. We are going to cover that in the example portion. So let's jump right into QuickBooks Online so we can see these basic financial statements. All right, we're on QuickBooks Online right now and we are on the dashboard screen. We're going to want to go into the reports menu and in your left navigation bar, you should see a, an area that says reports. Right where it says reports, you will see 
a little sub menu open up that will take you into the report section. Now, depending on the, the version of QuickBooks that you have, or if you're logged in as an accountant or as a small or as, as a direct uh, small business user, you, this left navigation bar might look different. And if you find yours to be different than the one that I'm using, and you want yours to look the same as mine, what you want to do is you want to click on the gear menu on the top right, and you want to go down to where it says switch to accountant view or switch to business view. So you're going to see that toggle that says business view and accountant view, and then right in the gear menu, you're going to see that toggle. And depending on whether you're in the business view or the accountant view, that your screen might look slightly different. So if you if you find yourself following along in your screen and it looks different, you probably need to toggle between business view and accountant view. Okay, so let's jump right to it. We're going to click on reports first and then click on the reports uh, sub menu on the reports. That's going to take me to my report center or my report screen. This is where we get to see all of the reports that are available. And in some cases, you know the name of the report. You can click on find report name and just type profit. And you're going to get a list of all the available reports that are available in your version of QuickBooks. As we mentioned earlier, some reports will be available in your version. Some won't, depending on which version that you have. So you can search them on the screen or you can simply just scroll down and they're going to be different categories. We're going to have the favorites category. It's the first major category that we see. And these are the reports that have been marked as your favorite. Basically, they have a star next to it. And they're basically letting you know that that report is one of your favorites. You should have quick access to that report directly from the screen. So in order to add something to your favorites or remove it to your favorites, all you have to do is click on the little star next to it. So we see a profit and loss detail. We click on that star and now it shows up in my favorites. We see this accounts receivable agent report. Let's say I don't want that in my favorites. Click on the star and it goes away from it. So the top four or five, six reports that you see most often should probably be the ones that you put in your favorites first. If you put every report in there, then it's no longer useful to have only a small subsection of those reports in your favorite. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open up the profit and loss report. And I have two choices. One, I can just click on that and that's going to take me straight to the profit and loss report, but it's going to close the window that I have on the screen. I use Google Chrome as my browser for QuickBooks Online. So I can right click on that link and then click on open link in a new tab. If you do that, the screen that you're on does not get closed, doesn't get replaced. And instead you're gonna see a tab in the top. So now you're gonna see two tabs, the one where I have the home screen and the one where I just opened the profit and loss report. If I click on the second tab, Perfect, I see my profit and loss report. Now, when I run these reports, I'm gonna to try to use the exact same period, especially if I'm comparing all the reports. For the reporting period, I'm gonna use this year. That way it just shows me the entire 2021 year from January 1st to December 31st. I click on run report and that's gonna show me everything. Now in the real world, when you're pulling what's called interim financial statements or mid period reports, you're gonna have a beginning and an ending date that closely mimics the state that you're in. So for example, let's say today is November 3rd and you wanna run a report all the way to the last closed month, which happens to be October 31st. So then basically you're gonna change the date range and select October 31st, or let's say September 30th, select September 30th and then click on run report. So you can simply just pick the date range that you want on that report. As we mentioned earlier, the profit and loss measures net income this is the number all the way on the top during a period of time. So right now, if you look at this report, which is January 1st, 2021 to September 30th, 2021, my net income is $274,000 or the profit, which contains all my sales and all my expenses. Now, the report can be looked at in different ways. For example, right now, this is an expanded mode, which means that every account category that has sub accounts can be expanded or collapsed. So if you see me clicking on that little triangle, I'm literally collapsing every single category that contains subcategories. In accounting terms, we call that accounts, accounts and subaccounts. So you can manually expand and collapse any categories you want, or you can just click on the collapse button. Oh, let me just click over here, collapse button, and it will collapse all the accounts for you. And then it won't let you um, expand any of them because you've forced the collapse in there. Now you can also sort, click on sort 
sort by total descending order, probably the most typical that we use. So we see the big number in the top, the small numbers in the bottom. So when we look at financial statements like profit and loss and balance sheet, those are the two sort of power tips I will give you. Make sure you know the date range that you're looking at and make sure whether or not you want to collapse and expand it. And finally, you're going to sort it by descending order, probably because it's the one that makes the most sense. But if you want ascending or no sorting, that's obviously up to you. I'm going to go back to my previous tab here, and I'm also going to run the balance sheet as well. So I'm going to click on the balance sheet, and now I have one tab with the profit and loss, one tab with the balance sheet. I'm going to pick the same exact uh, time period that I have that I had before. So before we had up to the 30th on the profit and loss, I'm also going to do up to the 30th in the balance sheet. I'm going to click on Run Report, and then I'm going to see a balance sheet for that period. As I mentioned earlier, especially when it comes to looking at the statement of cash flows, you want to make sure that you also understand the changes in the balance sheet over time or from the previous period. So for example, if I click on Compare to another period and I click on Previous Period, I get to choose the custom date range that I want to use for comparing my balance sheet. So if right now I'm looking at January 1st to September 30th, naturally you would say, well, what if I want to compare it to last year, then I have to put January 1st of 2020 through December 31st, 2020. And the reason for that is because the ending date of that comparative period should uh, be right before the beginning date of the current period. And the reason for that is because I want to see the exact amount that changed on every one of my accounts in the balance sheet from the period, uh, from the previous day of the period that I'm looking at. So I'm going to click on Run Report, and then I get to see my balance of all my assets. As we mentioned earlier, and I'll collapse these are at a high level. We see all of our assets, liabilities, and equity, and I can expand any of these, and I can, I'm going to collapse it by major category here. So we get to see our assets, which are current assets and fixed assets, and then we have liabilities and equity, which can be collapsed into current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and equity. So we're looking at what I own, which is my assets, and what I owe, which is my liabilities, and my equity, which is the difference between the two, which is also, as we mentioned earlier, is also going to be your retained earnings and your net income and all the accounts used where the owner puts money in and the owner puts money out. This stuff gets a little bit um, hairy and wonky in the accounting side, so you might want to maybe leverage your accountant a little bit to understand these in a much deeper level. But the, the really important high-level point I want to make here is that when we look at a balance sheet for a particular period and we look at the last number here in the equity section called net income, that 274,418 needs to match the profit and loss, which when I scroll down is the exact same number. So this is the place where these reports are joined by the hip in this uh, with, uh, with this um, net income number. So the last report that we're going to look at in this sort of basic reports scenario is going to be my statement of cash flow. So let me go back into the report center one more time. And I went ahead and opened it in a new tab. And then we're going to search for our statement of cash flows. Notice I can just type cash and it shows, shows up here, statement of cash flows. And I'll be able to run the report again because I'm comparing the up to September 30th. I need to do the exact same thing and then click on run report. So now I'm looking at my statement of cash flows that starts with my net income, the same number that we see in the profit and loss all the way in the bottom. And then all the way in the bottom of the statement of cash flows, we get cash at the end of the period, which is how much money you have in your banks or in cash if you're tracking petty cash as well. And if you wanted to find out why do I have 274 in net income, but $900,000 in cash, where that difference is, then you can look at all the um, transactions that made cash go up or cash go down in comparison with net income, which gives you that explanation at the end. So as I mentioned earlier, all these changes here, if you go up to your balance sheet and you look at any particular uh, category, so for example, we look at this PPP loan, SBA loan we got from the bank, uh, $379,000 as of today, but nothing uh, last year. If you look at that number, that number had a net change of uh, 379400 So if I look at my statement of cash flows, I'm going to see that exact net change in there. 
So again, any net changes we see on the balance sheet, uh, let me just go back to the balance sheet here, in any specific category. Okay, so for example, we see owner draws. There was a net change of $126,000. And there's a couple of transactions here affecting my, my equity. But when I go into my when I go into my statement of cash flows, I should see the owner's draw change by the exact same dollar amount. That's the purpose of the statement of cash flows is to consolidate the or reconcile the difference between net income and money in the bank. So now that we know the basics of financial statements, let's move on to customizing built-in reports and understanding cash versus accrual basis reports. First thing we're going to talk about is the fact that there's sort of a control center in top of every report, but there's a lot of things you can click and a lot of things you can customize. In this slide that we're showing here, uh, you, you get a, an explanation of what every single button in there does. We're going to cover a couple of these in the example, but you're probably going to be um, uh, playing with these and understanding them live in your live file so you can uh, understand them better. So you want to definitely check that out. We're going to do a couple of examples. Uh, on the second slide, the same thing. We're going to see multiple control mechanisms. The ones that are, uh, are worth uh, mentioning are date range. That's going to be number one. Talked about it that in the basic financial statements. We're going to talk about columns. That's probably the most common one when it comes to customizing. We'll also discuss, or we discussed already, collapse and expand. It's a really valuable tool. And you can add notes. You can change the title names of the reports if you want to change it to something that you will understand better. We talked about the sorting and there's a big customize button that allows you to filter and we're going to cover that stuff in the advanced class. Uh, but again, you can't break anything by customizing reports. So I definitely recommend that in your own file, you experiment with, uh, with all the buttons that are available in the reports menu. Now let's explain really quick what cash versus accrual basis means. And for a lot of small business owners, this is difficult to comprehend at first. But once you learn it and you master it, this stuff opens up um, a whole slew of ideas and, and insight and ways to look at reports in uh, sort of beyond the money in the bank. So cash basis is how most small business owners think about business. Cash basis represents your profit uh, as, uh, as a representation of money received and money spent. So all your income, all your sales, and all your expenses are only showing in a cash basis report when they're paid. So if the transaction is paid and if it's paid during the period of the report that you're looking at, if that's the case, then it will show up in the cash basis report. So anything as anything an open invoice or an open bill uh, that hasn't been paid yet or at least hasn't been partially paid, that's going to be completely excluded from your cash basis report. In an accrual basis report, it's sort of the opposite. Uh, all income and expenses will show up based on the date of the transaction, based on when they were incurred. It doesn't matter if they were paid or unpaid. They will still show up in the report as long as they match the reporting period that you're running in that, uh, in that report, the date range that you're using in that report. Here's a quick pro tip. When you're running a cash basis report, you might see an account called unapplied cash payment income or an account called unapplied cash bill payment expense. These are made up accounts by QuickBooks. And what QuickBooks does is if it detects that there is a customer payment during the period of the report date range that you're running, or if there's a bill payment, you're paying an account's payable, you're paying a vendor. And again, that's within the period of the custom day range of the profit and loss that you're running. And that profit and loss is a cash basis report. QuickBooks needs to put that money coming in and money coming out somewhere. And it puts it in that category. Then in the future, uh, and this is most, most common with sort of prepayments into the future. In the future, when you run those reports, that account sort of gets reversed. And the income and the expense goes into the right category because it will have an invoice or a bill to use to know how to categorize that transaction. So that unapplied cash payment uh, income and bill payment expense is, is, is a plug for cash basis whenever we have a payment that doesn't match uh, an invoice or a bill.